Now, rest is fun. Rest is something which has become very fashionable in the last year or so. But in fact, it's the, it's the underpinning of, of HTTP. It's, it's a very straightforward way of working with resources. What, what REST does is it says, look, we have a server with stuff and clients, and the clients can use create, read, update, delete patterns to work with the server resources. It's very simple. It's not complicated. There is, the state is very clear. You know where things are at any point. You can redo. If, you, if you're not sure, you can try again. You delete. Okay, delete again. No problem. So it's a very robust protocol, whereas most protocols are very fragile. If you get it wrong, it breaks. REST is very tough. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a pattern which works over you know, large scales and which is easy to use by people who don't have much time for the fine stuff. I quote from a user who was comparing REST to SOAP and XML RPC, and he said, moving to pure HTTP allowed us to throw away the code for the XML RPC service, in brackets, I love throwing away old code. And so I was saying, look, you know, let, let's try and make AMQP work over HTTP. It's obvious. I mean, the patterns don't quite fit, but HTTP has the, you know, everyone can program HTTP. I go in Perl, I say, I pull down WP, and I say, you know, UA request, clack, clack, click response, and I get something, and I do it in, in, in five minutes. So, okay, this was the challenge, getting AMQP working with HTTP. It took us some time. It's now there, it's called REST MS. And what this is, is a, it's a very clean REST, RESTful implementation of a messaging protocol which actually maps purely onto AMQP. So your clients, your applications speak REST MS, which is HTTP with you know, put, get, certain resources, which I'll explain in a second. And it's just HTTP, it's just a web client, could be in JavaScript, could be in Perl, could be in Python, Ruby, whatever and speaks to a server, which then maps that onto AMQP and then speaks to an AMQP server and back and forth. So it's like a proxy between AMQP and HTTP. What this means is that you can basically get from bare metal, well, bare programming language metal, if you like, onto working messaging application in a matter of a few hours, less. That's on www.restms.org. And that's an open protocol spec, which anyone can contribute to. You know, some things with AMQP I don't like is that the protocol is managed by a small group of people. It's very exclusive. If you want to contribute to it, you can't. Forget it. They won't accept contributions. I don't even know what's happening in version 1.0. It's happening behind the scenes. This is kind of annoying. If it's an open protocol, it should be open to anyone to contribute. So with REST, that's the way it is. If you want to have an you know, opinion on it, come with fixes. It's all there. It's all online. I was going to show an example, but very small. Basically, it's, 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 it's six lines. I'll read it at you, because who, who, doesn't, who does not know HTTP in, 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 in a modest sense? OK, no hands, that's good. So it starts, and it says, post. You know what post is, right? So it says, post, slash, restms, slash, domain, slash, default. This is saying, speak to my default domain object. And make it create something. So the default domain is like the factory for other objects. Content type, application, slap, slash, rest, mx, dot, uh, plus XML. That's just saying, I'm going to send you an XML document. Hang on a second. Then it gives a slug. A slug is like a name. It says slug, two points, fortune. That's the header, three lines of header. And then comes in an XML document, woof, which has brackets, rest, ms. Feed, type equals service. Close brackets, rest MS, that's it. So it's a little XML document being sent to a factory, which is a domain. I'll explain these words in a second. This tells an object on the server to create a new object. So the server does the creation of objects, and then it comes back with an HTTP 201 created with the location, which is the address of the object, which is a URI. And now the, app, now the client application takes a URI, does stuff with it. When it's finished, it says delete on that object. So it can do read, update, delete on that object that just got created. So the whole structure is self-navigating, created dynamically, and navigated through URIs. This is very, very, very nice. It means that you can completely partition work between applications without any kind of notion of security or, or, or you know, trying to 
If you know your URI, you can access it. If you don't, you can't access it. You can have public and private resources, and clients don't have to invent anything. Clients get information from the server, they use it, and they give it away. Okay, now I'll explain very briefly MQP and, and RESTMS as architectures, how they work. It's actually quite simple. You have a board, and you have chalk. <laughs> So the problem is you have applications here that want, to, that want some kind of a service. They want to get pizza. And you've got restaurants here that have pizza. They all have pizza. It's digital pizza, so there's no real pizza. And there's someone in the middle that can actually tell you where the restaurants are and how to get the pizza backwards and forwards. So you kind of say like, okay, I want a pizza. That's like your address. And someone here says like, yes, we have pizza. And in the middle, the request and someone's statement of we have pizza get matched up. And the request for pizza comes through. And it's pepperoni. And then that gets sent back a pepperoni pizza. So a few instants later, this pizza restaurant burns down in a ball of fire because the guy left the stove on too long and his wife was shouting at him. And this one is now visible, or it was visible before, but didn't get you know, paid attention to. So the thing about services is that they come and go completely randomly. Certainly, as a user here, you have no idea who you're talking to. It's indirect. It's abstracted. This is very, very important. It's easy to make architectures. The problem is, things change. And in all IT, it's change which is the big enemy. You know, stability is not an issue. Anyone can write, you know, a programmer, a compiler for correct code. In all kinds systems, don't accept change. But change happens a lot. Here, you can change stuff completely arbitrarily. And that's the magic of, of messaging. You can add and remove pieces, and they find each other dynamically, they do their work, and it's, it's, that's it. No state necessarily shared between them. And there are different patterns. For example, in this pattern, the message goes back through this central router, but in fact that's not necessary. You can actually do very nice peer-to-peer -peer messaging where you use the central point for address lookup, and then they talk directly. And if you know something like SIP, which is the voice over IP application that works like that, a central registrar for who's online and where they are, and then peer-to-peer -peer communications. And we do this in some of our, in some of our products. There's one called ZeroMQ, which works like this. It's very nice. Much, much faster than AMQP. But AMQP insists on everything going through one single central point. Okay. Now, the key concepts that AMQP, I think, introduced, and which work very, very well, are the concepts of an addressing thing here, which we call an exchange. And queues, which connect to exchanges through bindings. These are queues. I don't know how many E's here. Okay, that sounds about right. So queue binding exchange lets you create a queue that takes care of the asynchronous aspect if there's no pizza restaurants for a second, it'll wait in a queue. When one comes, it'll get its work. So queuing is essential to any kind of a robust system. And the exchange lets you then have a fixed point to talk to, but which then will handle the things that come and go. So you talk to a fixed point, you say, look, I want these and these messages. When they arrive, you get them in a queue. This makes sense? Okay, this certainly works very well. But in MQP, there's a few gotchas in there. For example, we have different kinds of queues. We have queues which are uh, shared queues where you basically uh, say, look, all my pizza orders will come in this queue. I get them one by one. I share them with different pizza restaurants. They're big, important queues. We also have little private queues, like I am subscribing to all, you know, the gold price. I want these prices in some little private queue for me. They're in the same space, which is kind of messy. There's a few other problems with that as well, but okay. REST MS works very, 
in a very similar fashion, but we, we use different names just to be annoying. Um, we, we, called, we call these feeds. We call these pipes. <laughs> 